Hi everyone, welcome back to my Flyboy channel. Today we'll be installing the Mamba F722 flight controller onto my 4 inch Gecko Armitan frame. It should be a pretty easy one. It's a beginner series. It's going to be part one of two. The second part will be we're going to actually gut it out in the field and do a little bit of PID tuning. So if you have a few minutes, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, let's look what's in the package. So here we have the flight control itself. We have some cables here. This uh, it's pretty nice. It comes with two cables. One's a little bit longer than the other. So now you have these different grommets for the different sizes. Well, and in this case, they're actually both the same size. So here we have um, the flight controller. If you could see, it's got nice, nice fat, thick pads on there. Now, this is a 20 by 20 to make all the pads fit. They, they got rid of all the labels. And that's how they were able to make the pads big, big enough so it's a lot usable than the really tiny smaller ones. And how to find out, of course, is this piece of paper, which uh, I took a look at a while ago, and it's really very thorough. So here it shows the mama stack. Now let's look at the let's look at the gecko frame. Here we have the gecko frame. Uh, first thing we need to do is let's remove the top plate. So let's take let's get rid of some of these props here. So now we have the board on here, with the wires cleared. What you can do at this point is making sure that everything's working correctly. You can, you can even plug in a battery. So I just finished prepping the, the receiver for the crossfire. What I did was I added this. I added this extra wire which is the yellow wire so here you've got the ground the 5 volt and then the white wire will be the TX and then the yellow wire is going to be the RX so here we are a little close up to the flight controller um, we're going to connect the crossfire receiver first I hope you can see this is from the diagram we have that top one is a 3 volt 3 so we want the 5 volt ground RX and TX so that's going to be UR1 for beta flight which we're going to show later on so what we want to do is make sure our iron is hot so this is the 5 volt pad I'm going to just kind of do like a little bit of circles and then start putting some solder onto it and eventually it's going to start sticking a little bit more not too big just like that so if you have a good bubble it's good make sure the bubble is not too high that means it's a, a cold joint um, do the rest here. This is ground. You can actually put a little bit more there. Because the pads are pretty big for a 20 by 20, so you want to take advantage of that. So when you put the wire in, it's just going to be one step. So here we've got that's for the TX. No, that's for the RX. Then this last pad is going to be for the TX. See, it gets quicker because the iron's already so hot, it just spreads the heat quicker. And that's... So 
So that's the four pads for the crossfire. So now for the wire. So on the receiver, the white wire is a TX. So the TX will go to the RX. So in this case, the bottom wire should be the yellow wire, which is the RX. So that RX is going to be connected to the TX. So that's going to be this wire. Does it in the way? Oh, can't move it too much. So I'll put in the RX wire first. I so said these pads are pretty big. It should be pretty straightforward. Right? And the white wire is a TX. So here the wire is going to go right there. And the next wire is going to be the ground wire. Not the best right there. There. And the last wire is the five volts. Five volt wire. Just have to kind of quick because sometimes the wire gets kind of hot. In that case, it's pretty good. Now, pretty much the only thing we have to install will be the Cadex Vista and the GPS. So, for the Cadex Vista, this is going to be for RX4, which is going to be UR4. That's where we're going to connect the Cadex Vista. So we have the RX4, the TX4, and then the ground. The red wire is already connected to the battery. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this 5 volt for the GPS. We're going to use the RX2, the TX2, and then the ground for the compass. So now we're going to attempt to heat up that pad at the very end. So I'll put some a little bit of solder on here, keep it hot. And we'll start here. Got a little bit too much. That one turned out pretty good. If the shape looks too weird for you, it just it's always good to add a little bit more heat. Sometimes if it's too high up, that means it's not wasn't hot enough and it didn't grab onto the copper like it should. Like here, if it's really good, it just flows straight into the copper. Right now the iron's super hot, so it doesn't take very long. Let it go, and there you go. So I turned the flight control 90 degrees so we can get better access of this. So this white wire at the end, as we said, was RX4. So we need a TX wire to go into the RX pad for the FC. Looks like it's on there. So now we need the yellow wire because now that's a TX line. Which 
I might have. Okay, so that's a good angle right there. We'll They're good. Then the next pad we have is ground. So let's put that ground on there. Perfectly aligned. Like I said, the pads are really big, so it makes it about 10 times easier than those smaller pads. So now the Cadex Vista is on. Okay, now let's continue with uh, the GPS. So for the GPS, we have the red wire. Pick this up. Then the next wire is the RX. And the green wire is going to be right there on the TX pad. Like it's on there good and the last wire according to the schematic will be the ground onto this big pad there's ground yeah this ground right there. go from here Looks pretty good. The only other piece we need to put is for the True RC antenna. One, two, three, four. That one. I'm gonna just heat it up just like the last time. There you go, it's starting to. Just take off that extra solder, it's not sticking. So now it's hot enough, it's uh, picking it up. So this one, I'm using the same technique as before since it's kind of a tough little piece. Um, put a little bit of solder on the, on the iron. And then you kind of sandwich it on there, make sure it's hot enough. In this case, there's no wires it really has to avoid from its location, so let's put enough heat here so it sticks. Make sure it's on the center, at least close to. So that's going to be the connection for the antenna. And that should be it. Now I just have to put it together and we'll uh, take a look at it in beta flight. So first you go to your systems folder, then scroll down to their TBS Agent Light Lewis Script application. Then from there you scroll down to your Nano RX.
and then you go to your output map. Then you change your output one from S bus. So you change that into Crossfire TX. Then automatically output two will change to Crossfire RX and then you're done. Then you just hit the back button. Now your Crossfire is, is set to go. So here we're in beta flight and we just opened it up. We haven't done any type of uh, changes to this. So the first thing we want to do is to calibrate the accelerometer. Because usually a new flight controller needs to know which is level. So we hit this button over here. And now we, we need to look at the ports. So here on the ports tab, you have UART1, which is for the crossfire. So you need the serial RX turned on. And then for the for the Cadex Vista, it's going to be in UART4. So in here on the MSP, that has Beyond on here. And just leave that value untouched. Now for the GPS, it's UART2. So you look for UART2 on here. You scroll all the way to the sensor input. Not tele telemetry, but there's a sensor input. And you go from disabled to GPS. And usually on the GPS, there's a certain baud rate that's on here. It's, it's either 1, 5, 200. But usually auto will still work. Sometimes auto works better depending on how quickly it catches the satellite signals on a cold start. So you can leave it on auto for now and maybe change it later. From my experience it seems like auto seems to pick up a little bit quicker. So we'll leave that there for now. Turn it back on. Now look at the configuration tab. And here we're running the motors in the regular direction so it's not reversed. D-Shot 600 is a good a good to use for uh, for the ESCs. Anything higher than that, sometimes it's kind of overkill and doesn't work. Uh, usually for D-Shot 600, you'd want to use eight kilohertz. So in this case, it's using eight kilohertz and then eight kilohertz for the PID. Uh, the former versions of Betaflight, you could change the, the gyros for the eight kilohertz to maybe four or two, but they just left it at eight for the. D shot 600. Um, let's see. Don't mess around with that. That's for the board orientation, accelerometers, trim. Now, here the arming angle. We always want to change this to 180 in case your, uh, your quadcopter is upside down. Um, if you happen to be upside down, you won't be able to arm. Like if you need to do a turtle motor or something like that, we'll have to change that. Um, craft name, you could put something here, we'll just call it Gecko for the craft name. Now the S bus, here we need to change the receiver. Since we were able to change the receiver from the full crossfire with the TX and the RX for the full UART, this will stay the same. Since it's still a serial based receiver, then now you just change the lower to Crossfire, which is CRSF for short. Here you make sure telemetry, telemetry is on. You turn on GPS since it's on. And then the protocol for most GPS, and in this case, is going to be U blocks. So change that to U blocks. Uh, the auto baud rate, since we had auto on the configure switch, I turn this on. Auto config, you leave those alone. Now ground sensor assistance, we just put auto detect. And we'll keep going down. And this just has to do with the 
um, how you want the, the motors to beep. Uh, sometimes I turn this on for the auxiliary channel. The only problem is when you, you plug in the quad, it's going to beep until you, you connect your, uh, your receiver. Uh, you just The best thing is to turn on your receiver so it doesn't beep so much. So now we save and reboot. So now we're going to go into the receiver tab. And as I showed you before, we switched the we switched to Nano RX um, to read from S bus to reading to the Crossfire TX and RX. So now the you can see that when I move when I move the sticks on the receiver, it starts to move around in here. It's not quite correct yet. We have to adjust the channel map. By default, it's always AETR, but we need to change it to T A E R. So T A E R. First, you have to save it. So now, when you move the stick up and down, the throttle moves. If you move left and right, this will control the yaw, and on the right stick, when you move up and down, the pitch will move, and the left and right will move the roll. So you know it's correct. So you save it again, and that's good. Now you go into the modes for the switches. For, for here, for the arming switch, we have to add the range. So here I have um, switch 1, which is aux 1. So when I move the switch Five. on, Battery armed. 25 milliwatts. it's, it's going to be in this, this range. So that means when you move this switch up to this range, it's going to turn, it's going to turn the quadcopter on. Engine off. You turn it off. And the other switches that I have would be angle mode. So we're going to add a range here. In this case, I use four. This angle mode I use for um, in case you, you lose sight or lose um, some type of connection. So I'll move this angle, the switch, which is auxiliary four, which is actually my SC switch all the way to the right. So I'll have to move the range so that it reaches it. Because when you're when you're not looking at your goggles, it's easier to move the switch all the way to the all the way to the back instead of the middle. So that we just kind of hit the switch all the way to the end, and then it puts your quadcopter in angle. It's more for safety purposes in case, like I said, if you lose connection while you're flying. Now the beeper function. That's why we clicked on that um, beeper setting in the configuration. So in my case, it's I believe it's two. Okay, my motors are run. So now when we look on here, we look for one more item. In fact, this is what I use, which is, let's see, flip over crash. And that one I'm gonna add a range, which is gonna be auxiliary, auxiliary three. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna flip that switch over. That's going to uh, give me access to turtle mode in case I'm upside down. So that's going to be for auxiliary 3. So we just save it. And that's good. So now that one last thing um, is some, some OSD. But for OSD, we're not really going to make any changes at, the, at this point. So in OSD, we have a few things. Um, we want to make sure we set our video format and that's where you have to add you know your craft name your battery voltage average cell voltage and that's something you just have to configure 
uh, according to what you want to use. What we need to do now is just prepare this for um, for PID tuning. Now what we want to make sure is we take advantage of the filtering that uh, Betaflight 4.2 has. So we want to go to bidirectional D shot and make sure that's on. Now this has a default motor for the number of magnets on your motor. You can manually count it but usually the diff usually most motors are 14 but it's good to double check and make sure and you'd have to change that accordingly. This motor idle throttle was is probably just going to stay the same and then you should be okay for that. And then you want to save and reboot, make sure that's saved. And you also have to remember for bidirectional D shot that's only for BHEL LE32. Um, in my case, it was BL Heli S, so I had to put a firmware to make it to make it actually work. So in the PID tuning tab, we want to just make sure everything is default, which is one. So here for a 4.2, everything's on a slider, so we want to have everything as default. Do an initial run, and then on the filters tab, it's still going to be also default. We're not going to change anything right now. Um, that's actually going to be in, on the next video for PID tuning. So we'll save it. And on my next video, we're going to do some PID tuning and take it out in the field and do some adjustments. So that completes it for the installation of the Dytone Mamba F7 flight controller. A little bit of beta flight for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope to see you in the next video where we're going to PID tune it and take it out in the field and do some adjustments to see um, how well it flies and see what we could do to make it better. So if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.